All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. We're doing an Extreme Beginners series here, another video for the Extreme Beginners out there. Thank you all so much for comments, great comments. I really appreciate that you're letting me know you're out there, you're just starting out, you want to get all the great information that you need, starting out as a watercolor artist. Yes, the beginning's tough. Absolutely, I'll be a t I can testify to that. I'm going to bring in some paintings soon. Over the next couple weeks, I have to get over to a uh, storage facility that I have, and I have a bunch of early paintings that I did in my first two, three, four years. And uh, I'm going to bring them on the uh, channel here, and you're going to see some of the early videos. We can look at them. We can critique them together. You're going to see some of the um, issues and challenges I had um, with drawing, with painting, with how I was using my techniques and all those type of things. So you'll we'll cover all that and we'll go over it. So we have a lot of great videos coming up for you. And I want to thank you again for, again, letting me know you're uh, just starting out. Um, I want to thank you for your encouraging words, your very kind comments on my channel. I always appreciate that. It's so nice to hear from you. I also thank you for your questions. Some of you did send some questions in here and there on some different things, different topics in watercolor, and I'm always happy to answer your questions in the uh, comments section, of course. You know, anything you might have, if I don't know the answer, I'll go and look it up and then get back, to, you know, and also answer the comment, even if I don't know it myself. I can always go and look it up too as well. I do a lot of research all the time, so I'm just used to just going on to the Google or whatever search engine or looking up some things in my, um, uh, or I have a couple artists dictionaries that uh, thesauruses and, and dictionaries and things like that and guidebooks that have a lot of information in there too. So, um, you know, that I've gathered over time, some really good books. So we're gonna get started here. Uh, we have our palette. This is the Prang palette that I use, it's really great for beginning. You don't have to invest a ton of money. It's semi-moist watercolors. These are about $5, maybe $6 for this. You can get these online. They, they come with a brush. So you'll have a brush when you order this set. And uh, somewhere is the brush, let me find it. And let's see if I can find that brush. There it is. Okay, so it comes with a brush. A nice round brush with a good point so you'll have a brush and a palette all you have to do to activate this paint is spritz the pan like this the paints with a little bit of a spritzer bottle and within one or two minutes you're ready to paint and it's all soft and moist the paint you get beautiful color <clears throat> that's what we're looking for I always keep my palette clean let's clean the palette here I just spray on some water too onto the palette so we'll close up this one. You can take out your paint. What I like to do is I like to set up my palette. You'll hear me say this all the time. Take out your colors and arrange them the way you want them arranged. So I take all my warm colors, like my red, orange, yellow, and I put them over here. So I have all my warm colors over here, starting with the warmest, the hottest color, red, and then to the dark orange, medium orange, light orange, yellow, brown, green, starting to get cool with the greens, and then sure enough, more uh, cooler green yet then you get into your blues you're really cool there into your blues and then purples and then you're pretty much set and then you just have a black and a white if you want to use that occasionally try to mix it into your uh, you know routine and see how you like those two colors this can make some smoky effects if you want and black can be a nice beautiful color you could just use on its own or you can add it into your paintings but for the most part we have a really nice selection of colors and again I take my um, paints out like that and I rearrange them in my palette to do this and I think it's good if you do try to organize your palette warm and cool and you can you know do it from one end to the other whatever you feel comfortable with but I think this is a good way to go and then you just want to always keep it the same you always want to keep your palettes the same so eventually when you get more interested more color and you get a new palette hey you just want to make sure you're going to set it up your first time think it out We'll go over that too, how you can design your palette. We'll cover that on an upcoming video, how to design your palette to lay out your colors. Uh, you know, if you step up and do a, a newer palette, maybe in next year or in six months, you wanna add a new palette to your uh, art, collect, you know, your art supplies. Uh, we'll go over how you can do that. So let's do, let's get started here. Uh, this is just, again, inexpensive paper, Strathmore watercolor paper. And I got this for about uh, four or five dollars. 
This is a good sh uh, 12 sheets of watercolor paper. And, uh, you know, it does the job. It's a little bit of a rough texture, not completely smooth. So you get a little bit of a nice grainy look to it. And you can use both sides of your paper. We'll do that here. We just recently did a lighthouse painting. I might save this. I like this how this turned out. Our lighthouse picture we just did recently on our Extreme Beginners channel. I hope you had a lot of fun doing this painting. I'm going to save this one because I think it turned out really nice. So I'm going to keep that. And I'll put that across from me in my table. And uh, we'll start out with another sheet of paper here. I'm just going to fold my pad over like that. Put it on the table here and I'll just tape it down so it doesn't move around. So I'll find some artist tape here. I always have artist tape. It's always good to have artist tape. You, you'll find that really goes a long way. So I'll just take some artist tape here and I'll just tape down my, my pad so it doesn't move around. You want to try to always keep your um, working area secure where things aren't sliding around or moving around. That's real important. So here you see I'm taping down my watercolor pad with my watercolor paper. I have my palette taped down too so that it, you know, it moves a little bit but you know it's not sliding around. You don't want to have things moving around especially your your paper because when you're painting and drawing you don't want things moving around at all. You want it to be very good stable. You tape it down to a board to your table whatever you're working on whatever way you feel comfortable and we'll go over more techniques on that too on how to secure your <clears throat> paper and your palette and different things we'll go over your working habits your how you store your art supplies we're gonna go over a lot of great videos in the upcoming uh, weeks and months and years actually we're gonna just keep moving forward as beginners on this beginner series and I'm gonna share you share with you the best of the best the best knowledge all the best tips and tricks and uh, ideas that I have that I've used over the years when I started out I was looking for all the easy ways to do things so and the best ways to do things and trial and experiments and I would always try new and different things if I didn't like it I would just put it to the side and try something new and that's the same thing I hope you'll do the same thing with our watercolors here these videos please don't feel like you have to do everything my way you're the artist, you're just starting out, you can change things too. I suggest you kind of stick with my way in the beginning. Maybe try out all that I'm teaching here and try to do it my way for a while. But if you find some things you need to just put to the side and you're not really too happy with the way I'm doing something, one or two things here and there every once in a while, that's okay too. You know, I don't say that I have every right idea or I am like, you know, have the best knowledge you know out there in, in the world I'm just I'm trying to share with you what I what I do and uh, sometimes you're gonna need to do things different if it works out that you need to do something a little different just go for it don't worry about it don't feel like you have to stick with everything I say and do here just try to stick with the program as much as you can if you gotta do some other things you know a little different than what I do that's fine too it, it, it works you know and that's the fun thing about watercolor when you learn things on your own and you do things a little different you'll you'll feel really good about that because you'll have found it on your own. You'll have researched it and sort of, you know, made a discovery on your own and you'll really feel happy with that. So always look for those new discoveries that you make in your watercolors and, uh, and in your painting and drawing and your uh, art. So this one I wanted to, on this painting, first thing, let me just, I'll just, uh, Kind of clean up the palette here a little bit while it's still water in there and it's good. We want to have a clean palette when we work most times. So let's always try to keep our palette nice and neat and clean. When you get some muddy looking paint on there, that's the perfect time to take a break when you're painting and wipe up the palette and uh, just remix your colors as you go. Okay, so we have that done. Now the thing I wanted to share with you is some really great brush techniques. With watercolor, I really impress uh, upon everyone, try to learn really good, fun habits with your brushwork. The best way to practice brushwork is when you're not in the middle of a painting, a really serious painting where you're trying to paint a beautiful painting and then you're kind of stuck and you, you're not sure how to paint a certain section, you get confused. The best way to practice is to have fun and do swatches like we're gonna do here. So we'll just start out and we'll do a, you just have to draw a square just like so. 
you start out with maybe a square or two. Well, let's do one, let's do a two or three across here. One, two, three. Let's do four. Four squares, you know, rectangles. We'll do these four. And then we'll just go over a few things as we go. Now I always encourage everyone to, you know, if you don't make a perfect square, no problem. I've been drawing, you know, many years now, 15 years. I can easily draw a square or a rectangle without too much of a problem. So don't worry about it. If your squares are a little bit off, they're not perfect, that's fine. You're gonna, it takes time to get your drawing skills, uh, you know, perfected. So don't be hard on yourself. Try to draw the best square you can freehand or a rectangle that you can. Try to keep it with four, maybe here. Depends on your size paper. But you see I did four across here. Try to do those four and that's it. Don't worry about it. We'll put the pencil down and we're gonna grab our brush. And then we'll get started. We'll do a little bit of painting. So I'm gonna use our brush here that we have with the set. So we have this brush that we got with the set. I just wet the uh, bristles a little bit here. We have some paint there. And let's start off with some, let's start off with our red. And we'll just mix a little bit of red there. We'll take some red out of our palette. Look how rich and beautiful that is. And then we're going to try, the first stroke we're going to try to do is, let's do a, an H stroke. And that's a, basically an H shape with our brush. So I'm going to put a marking on here, H. And then we're going to take this and let's try an H. So the first thing we do with an H is we go once, we go down there twice, and then we go across the middle. That's the first part of our swatch, making an H shape. Then we go back in, and then we just fill in here. Like that. And there we have it. We have a beautiful red swatch here. Now, if we keep, again, like I said, if we keep, you, you, does this make sense? If you practice this in a fun, free, easy way, like we're doing right now, if you're doing this for six months to a year, practicing it all the time, as much as you can, after about a year or time, even a half a year time, you're gonna be so used to these brush strokes and how we're doing the application of this paint here, this watercolor paint, that you'll be doing it automatically in your paintings and you won't even be thinking about it. It'll be second nature. It'll be like a baseball player swinging the bat. After he practices many years of swinging the bat, eventually a baseball player doesn't even think anymore about swinging his bat. He's concentrating on the ball coming in at, you know, 100 miles an hour, and he's gonna be focusing on that, not on his swing and where his arm's gonna be and his hand and his wrists and all that kind of thing, right? And the way he's standing. So if we practice these fundamentals, or if we're thinking of like a tennis racket, if you have a tennis racket and you're playing tennis, you practice in the beginning and you learn the different ways to use your racket. You know, you're gonna use it forehand, then you gotta learn the backhand. So this way you can get to the ball and use it, you know, for a forehand swing. Or if you gotta go to the opposite side of the court, you gotta use your backhand, you're gonna swing it the other way. Same deal, if you're doing your painting and practicing all these different strokes, it'll be like you won't need to practice it anymore eventually after maybe a half a year or a year and you'll have it just it'll be automatic pilot for you you won't even be thinking about it you'll just be painting and it'll be a free experience where you're thinking of other things besides you know technique or getting stuck with how do I paint this section of the painting does that make sense so let's try orange here Let's do a different stroke now. Let's practice. And there's only maybe four or five you can practice. So you can make up your own, too, if you want. Who am I? You know, you can practice your own, too. Make up your own brush strokes. That's fine, too. Some people like to paint different. I'm just showing you what I did and what works for me. And if you can try this and you might like it and, and think that it will definitely uh, be a help to you as you're painting. So here we're going to go. The S stroke. Basically, it's an S shape. Once across that way over this way and then this way there you go s stroke then you just get some more paint pick up that paint and then you just fill in the rest of the way like that and then over here you fill in this and you can go outside the lines it doesn't matter it's only a guide these squares 
that we made, the swatches. All right, how is that looking so far? I hope you're practicing along with us here. We're having a great time. This is a great time, and this, like I said, it's fun. If you're having a fun time doing your brush strokes and getting your paint on the paper and, you know, getting the feel for watercolor and the brush strokes and the paint and the water, you'll have a fun time with it like this. Then when you go to do a more serious painting, like if we're going to do the lighthouse, well, then it's going to be a lot easier doing our lighthouse painting because you've already practiced the strokes and then you're doing all the different strokes without even thinking about it. And then you'll be free to think about your painting more and, and your colors and so forth and other things you want to focus on. And in the beginning, if you do a lot of these, you're going to be really happy and you'll really be pleased with the uh, progress you make. So we did an H stroke, an S stroke. Let's do a um, let's do a vertical. So we're going to change up a little bit. This will be a vertical stroke. Okay. Now let's go into uh, let's go into some blues. Maybe some bluish green here. So I just take some bluish green here. This is like an aqua color, like a uh, turquoise color. And let's do some vertical strokes here. We're just going to do up strokes. So I rest my hand on the paper, keep my hand rested on the paper. I'm working left to right because I'm a right handed person. So I always, usually in my paintings, I'm always working left to right so I can rest my hand on the paper just like this. And then I do that. So this would be your vertical stroke, up stroke like that. One more paint and water, up stroke like that. And you stop short of the pencil line so you can fill that in. Down here you can see that, so you can go right up to the line on the bottom. Can you see that? Up stroke and you stop short up top so you don't want to go over your, you know, if you want to be accurate, you know, you don't want to go over that upper line up here. So you start, if you have your hand resting on the paper and you have your brush, and you get your brush in position and you say, okay, now I'm going to start my upstroke. Well, here you can see the tip of your brush really well. So you can get really close to your pencil line there like that. And then you just press the brush down and then go upwards. But then you stop short of that. Can you see that? I stop short of that upper line up here, pencil line. This way we can go in and get more paint. And then we can just go across here and get a more accurate job of that, right? So now we can get that accurate. So if we just went like this and went all the way up and we went over that pencil line up here, it wouldn't look so good because we're trying to be accurate here and get our paint within the borders of this pencil line. So you can see how I did that. And then you just fill in those little bit of sections once you're done with the major vertical strokes. And you can also touch these up a little bit if you want to, like that. You know, and then over here too, you can touch this one up a little bit. Like that. There you go. I'm sure you're having a great time with this at home and in your studios and having a wonderful time painting this and having a good time, a pleasant time, and not stressing over anything because we're just having fun. We're just practicing some fundamentals here. All right, let's try one more. Now we did the H stroke, the S stroke, the vertical stroke. Let's go with the, um, let's see, we could do a number. Let's try um, horizontal. Let's not try horizontal. Let's try... Um, we call this one, let's call this one vertical up. Let's call this one vertical down. Or let's not even call it that. Let's get our kneaded eraser. If I can find my erasers here, here we go. I'm going to call this one down stroke. downstrokes. Okay, I rinse my brush off. Now when I'm rinsing my brush off you can use many different methods. You can take a small piece of sponge or even a larger sponge, buy your water container and just rinse off your brush and then touch it down onto the uh, sponge a little bit to take off some of the water. You don't want your brush flooded with water as you're going in and getting your colors. You can do that. Um, I also often often I use a tissue so I keep a tissue in hand rinse my brush off in the water container then I bring it over to the tissue tap a little bit of water off on the tissue and then I can go over here and get my paints so we did red orange 
turquoise. Let's go with purple. Um, downstrokes will be, we're going to start up here like this, keeping your hand on the paper. So you're going to have your hand resting on your watercolor paper. And then you just take your brush, touch it down, and then go down like this, and then stop short so you don't go over the line. I went over the line a little bit, no big deal. And then here we'll do the same thing. I'll pick up some more paint. And we do another down stroke like this, and we stop short like that. Let's do another one, down like that, stop short. Another one here, you go down, stop short. One more, keep it right along that pencil line. Perfect, look at that, okay. Then we can just take our brush and do the same thing. We rest our hand on the paper and then do like a, a, a parallel stroke here and we can make this a little bit larger and paint over the pencil line and you just fill in the rest like that. And then you can go down like so there, and then fill in the top like this. So that's what you gain when you're working with a set of particular shapes that you learn and practice over and over again in a fun and loose way. And then when you get into your painting, you're doing it automatically, you don't even realize it. And you will realize it sometimes if you're trying to work in a difficult section of your painting and you'll just be like, oh, I gotta do an S stroke there, or oh, I better do a, a down stroke in this section over here. So you'll, you'll figure out where you need these automatically in your paintings when you practice these over and over again. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna take a quick break. I always take breaks and it's a perfect time right now. We've been working 15, 20 minutes. Um, let's take a break quick. We'll come back and we'll finish up with a few more um, swatches and we'll do a few more different um, practice styles of uh, brush strokes. So you have quite a few in your arsenal that you can practice. And again, please do these as often as you can. They're fun, they're easy. You can just take out your paints real quick and maybe work 10, 15 minutes and do a few of these and then you're good to go. And then you can just go about your day. If you got other things, you're busy, I understand. But at least get in a little bit of this maybe every day or every other day or so. Or if you gotta work on the weekend, you can do it on the weekend too. But uh, just try to fit some of this into your regime, your, you know, your, uh, your practicing uh, habits because it'll really go a long way. I promise you it will. It'll make painting so much more fun and less stressful. Okay, let's. I'm going to take a quick break. I always mention too before I take my break. Hey, why not subscribe here, please? Feel free. Subscribe. The button's down there below on the right hand side. This way you get our videos every week, and this way you won't lose your place if you have to go searching for me. You might not find me on YouTube. You might forget my name or the name of my channel or whatever. No big deal. But if you subscribe, you're going to have our videos every week coming to you and you'll be alerted on your YouTube uh, channel on when your, uh, your phone will be alerted saying, hey, we made a new video, Chris Petri made his new video, beginner's video, and you'll jump in and watch it, at least watch the video, and if you wanna join along, you can paint too, or you can save it till later and paint later on in, when you have time to do it. But uh, keep up your great uh, practicing, and um, we're gonna come right back in just a second, and we'll um, do a few more uh, brush strokes and we'll finish up this uh, page here with some more interesting colors and brush strokes. And then we'll have this video completed and it'll be a great video. You can favorite or put in, you know, save in one of your files so that whenever you want to practice brush strokes, all you have to do is go and look in your folders in your YouTube um, channel, your homepage, your own, your own channel, and you can find this in the favorites. Or you just type in Chris Petri in YouTube and just type in, uh, you know, be extreme beginners uh, brush stroke practice and then you'll find us, you'll find this video. Okay, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back everybody. Again, thanks for uh, joining along. We're doing some great practice work here. We're practicing extreme beginners brush strokes. You know, as an extreme beginner, one of your first things you wanna do, you wanna practice are your brush strokes. Get familiar with your brush, um, you know, with your paints, with your brush strokes. Um, it takes a while. It really does. It takes a while. You know, some people take it for granted. They might work with their hands. You know, if you're in construction or if you work um, with your hands a lot, um, manufacturing people that work in manufacturing or someone that works a lot with um, perhaps with uh, having to do a lot of writing with their job. Well, everyone, you're all going to bring different skill sets to, to watercolor. Some of you might not have uh, maybe as much uh, 
strength in maybe drawing skills. You might have weaker drawing skills than others. Maybe some other people have had to draw. Maybe they might have to do uh, sketches or something for their job uh, in construction. You know, you have to do sketches once in a while. So I used to, you know, I've been in construction my entire life. I've always had to do sketches and things and draw things. And I always had to look at things and see if they're straight when I'm working. You know, if I have a a wall I'm building, I got to make sure that wall is straight. Or if it's a window I'm putting in, I got to make sure the window's straight. I can't. I rely on trying to look at things real carefully. So when I became a watercolor artist, I brought certain skill sets to watercolor, and it helped me a lot. It helped gave me an advantage. But uh, some of you may not have that advantage. You might not work with your hands, or you may not um, do a lot of visual things. So you have to build your skills, uh, you know, as you need to. So you might have to draw a little more and look at things a little more carefully as you go. But that's fine. You can learn it. It's not rocket science. It definitely uh, is a doable medium. You can have a great time with it. So that's what we're here to do. I'm going to show you how to just build up your confidence, your strength with watercolor, with your brushwork. And again, it's the simple, uh, you know, rule here. If, you know, if it was sports, think of sports, right? If you're a sports player and you have to use a golf club, you have to practice with that golf club. And each year you're out there and practicing a little more with your golf club, you're getting used to the the feel of it, the way it feels, the weight of it, the way it swings, how to turn it a little bit this way, a little bit that way to maybe change the way the ball uh, goes off and, and traje you know the trajectory of the ball. You can uh, angle your club a little bit more to get a, a certain shot you want to get or so forth. So it's the same thing when you think about watercolor. You've got to learn how to use this brush and we have to learn how to use our pencil and brush really well. So you got to just get familiar with it. Work with it as much as you can. Practice as much as you can. Put as much time as you can in. Every bit of time you put in, you're going to be a little better at it. That's really the simple thing of uh, watercolor, basically drawing and painting in watercolor, is you're just putting in your time. If you can do 15 minutes a day of drawing, wow, after a couple weeks and then a month and a couple months later of doing 15 minutes a day of drawing, you're going to see your drawing skills get a lot better. And the same thing with brush strokes and brush work. If you're painting and doing brush um, exercises like this, you do this for a couple months, six months later, you're going to be having a blast. You'll be doing these like no problem. And then when you get into your paintings and you try to uh, get in and do a finished painting, you're going to have an easier time. You're going to have less stress. You're going to have more fun at it. So let's keep doing it, okay? Let's uh, get started here again. Let's, we'll do um, parallel strokes. So what I'm going to do is draw an elongated rectangle like so. And I also, again, I'm incorporating doing some drawing in here because I want, I want you to practice drawing too. So yes, we could just sit here with our brush and not draw any squares or rectangles. But if you practice these by drawing them, you're going to, that's all the more you're practicing, right? Can you see how that works? Try to do a little pencil drawing here while you're doing your swatches and your painting. And there you have it. You have both your drawing and your painting done in one practice section session here. So let's let's keep going. I'm going to change up here. I'm going to do I'm going to use a nice flat brush here. And this is a Princeton flat brush. 5 8 wash. It's called the Princeton Art and Brush Company. Wash brush. Flat brush. It's 5 8 it came in a set for about six dollars. I got another smaller flat brush like this. I got this one here. I got this here as well. And uh, I also got a really large flat brush here as well. This one here. Maybe we'll use this one too. So you can kind of see for like five or six dollars, these uh, Princeton brushes are really phenomenal. You get a great value for and a great um, set of brushes. I got the rounds and the flat brushes. So let's take the flat brush. I'm going to have some water, rinse, rinse my brush, add some water to it, tap a little bit of water off on my tissue to take a little bit of water off it. And let's go in. Let's try a couple different colors. Maybe let's go with um, green and blue. So let's go with um, this here. Wow, that's a nice blue. Look at that. Beautiful. Mm. So we mix a little bit of blue with our flat brush and let's just do a parallel stroke from left to right. And if you happen to be left-handed, you'd want to work the opposite direction. So you'd want to go like this if you were left-handed and start over here and then go across the page like that. 
but we're going to do this this way, left to right, as I always say. If you're right-handed, you're working left to right. And we're going to call this a parallel stroke, brush stroke. And we're going to go like this. Flat brushes work great if you're using square shapes, rectangular shapes. And we just take it and we go right across. Wow, how beautiful is that? Just like that. And you just remember as you're getting closer to your pencil lines here, it's easy, right? You can, can you see that? It's a little bit easier here when you're starting over on this side to land right where the pencil line is, no big deal. But then as you go across this way, always remember, keep an eye out for that other pencil line over here on the right and stop short of it. And you can always go in and do a little touch up like that. Okay. Now let's get some more color. Let's do, um, we got some blue. Let's go with some green. Let's do some green up here. I need a little bit of more water there. Get some of that water in there. Let's, let's blend this one a little bit too. Let's overlap just a little bit there. See? Okay. Maybe we go with a little darker green there. Wow, does that look good or what? Can you see how good that looks? That blending of the blue and the green? Okay, and then let's do some yellow. Do one more color on the bottom of this. I start out here, start right out on the corner there, and just nice and easy, go right across. And there we have it. Does that look great or what? Blue, green, and yellow. Beautiful colors. Mixing them all together as we go from the top. Parallel stroke, parallel, left to right, parallel stroke. Keeping the brush parallel. And we just use three colors and blend them right together and go right down the line. And this could be like a sky and some grass and some beach, some beach sand, some grass and some sky. So you can kind of get the feel of those cool looking colors and the interesting colors of the sky, the cool blue and then the green starting to warm up. And then some of the grasses and fields, maybe that's a, a yellow field with some wheat, you know, and you can kind of think about different things as you're painting, getting f the feel for your colors and what they might be. Okay, so that's a parallel stroke. Now we can, uh, let's see, we have, uh, let's do a Z stroke with our square brush. Let's try that. All right, so now we're going to do, uh, let's do a Z stroke and we'll use our flat brush. Maybe we'll use our large flat brush. So again, I draw a large square doesn't have to be perfect. Again, if it's a little bit off, that's fine. No big deal. If you have some paper, you can always practice before you do this. You know, practice some, some squares some rectangles, you know, on some scrap paper. You know, if you're looking like this, that's fine too. Anything, this is good, that's good. You know, you do something like that, these are all good too. Something like this, that's good as well. If you're coming up with stuff that looks like that, this, that's fine. It takes a little while before you start to get the feel for um, getting an accurate square and rectangle. It does take time. Um, but it's not, again, it's not something that you cannot do. It's just a little bit of practice. And you start to realize, okay, well, this is a straight line this way. Straight level line this way. Straight plumb line this way. Straight level line this way. And that's, you know, a square. So it's just a matter of seeing the lines and going, this one's plumb. 
straight plum like this, plum line, plum, which means perfectly vertical. This one's perfectly level, which is level this way. It's not this way or this way. And then another one perfectly straight like that. And then another one perfectly level this way, a level line across. And also, too, you can always practice with um, some rulers. You can, you can get a ruler, and maybe sometimes you like to practice with the ruler. And you just take your ruler and you move it around, you get it straight. Like that. You take it, you move it around. It's always good to get used to the ruler, because we use rulers in watercolor. You can use your rulers to get some architecture, if you're doing some architectural Maybe you're drawing like a building for a watercolor painting or a house, you know. Sometimes you'll use a ruler to get your angles a little more. Maybe you need to get a, like a triangle or something like that. So if you have to get a triangle, it's a little more easier with a ruler, like so. So if you're coming up with things like this, this is perfect, fine. In the beginning, if you have a triangle that looks like this, that's fine too like this, that's good, perfect, don't stress. And then once you do your pencil, pencil, pencil or pen, you know, marker, you can use magic markers for this type of exercise too, it's up to you. Crayons or anything like that, you know. Uh, once we have our pencil drawing, then we're gonna use our square brush and we'll use, we'll use our square brush again and maybe we'll use a purplish color here. Kind of like a lavender color. Let's do his lavender color here. Let's see how that looks. We're going to do a z-stroke and we just make our markings on here. And once you make this type of a, a chart, you know, you can do a practice run like this, just like this one, mimic, recreate the same exact chart, then do a better one. Take your time a little more, maybe do a second or third one. And when you get one just right, then you just, you leave it and you keep it in a folder. And then you just say, oh, I forgot I was supposed to practice my brush strokes. Which ones did I was? Oh, yeah, H stroke, S stroke. Vertical up, down strokes. Parallel strokes. Here we're going to do a Z stroke. Z stroke. And you save these. You save your practice. Okay, we're going to do a Z stroke, which is once like this, cross like that. Then we're going to go across like this, stopping short of the corner. See how I did that? Can you see that? I stopped short of the corner because I, I don't want to go over the pencil line. I'm trying to, I mean, we try to stay in the lines. If you go over the lines, it's not a big deal, but try to keep accuracy here in your, in your, in your mind as being very important. Accuracy is very important. You want to try to keep at, be accurate with your your brush strokes within your pencil line or your drawings. Okay, so now we've got a Z, which of course is the Z stroke. And then once you have that done, then you can maybe do a vertical down stroke. A few of those. Good. A couple And then the same thing here, maybe we do a nice downstroke here and here and here. Perfect, look at that. We covered a lot of ground here, didn't we? With just this nice flat brush, we got a large wash in really, really quick. So that's the real um, fun part about watercolor is once you're kind of like getting used to using maybe a smaller brush to do your smaller color swatches here. Then you start moving in and you start using a larger brush and you start practicing how it feels to work with a larger brush. And then this way, whether you're doing a small painting or whether you want to do a larger painting, you've got it covered because you know the feel. You felt how it is to use the larger brush to cover larger amounts of area with your colors. And again, you're setting yourself up for success when you're doing these exercises because the mistake I made is I didn't practice these type of exercises in the beginning. So when I got to a larger painting, because I wanted to paint bigger paintings eventually, and I started to buy the bigger paper and say, hey, I'm going to paint a larger painting. And then when I got to it, I was like, I was so used to painting small 
all the time using small paper that I didn't know how to use the larger brushes and how to get the larger washes onto the paper quickly and effectively. And that's where you really, you'll have a really fun time doing this. And I forgot to back out my camera here a little bit so you can see the bottom of that. We'll do one more uh, Z stroke on the right hand side here so you can see I kind of had a little bit of a issue here with my paper. And then let's put this in here, Z stroke. So we'll put this up top here, Z stroke. Maybe let's do, let's do an S, maybe one more S stroke over here. So we'll do an S stroke with a large rectangle. S stroke. Okay, and we're going to use, um, I have also another really fantastic brush. This is a uh, Simply Simmons brush. This is a number six, Simply Simmons, very inexpensive. I think this was like $3. It's a round brush, synthetic, good spring to it, and it would be a good size for this, this um, rectangle here. So I'm going to rinse my brush off. Dry off a little bit of the water on a tissue or a sponge if you want to set down a sponge next to your um, water container or if you're wearing this, uh, a uh, apron, you can tap a little bit of water off on your apron. And then we'll go in and we'll get some other colors. Let's see, let's try some, what do we have here? That's pretty nice. Yeah, let's mix, let's do that. That's like a purplish blue. Okay, S stroke. Now, the only thing is with this size brush, it's not large enough to really do this. Can you do an S stroke with a flat brush? Well, let's try it. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to start out like that. Perfect, look at that. Then we go in quick. We want to do this quick so it dries nice and even. And I'm just going to do a downstroke like that. Downstroke there. Downstroke here. Maybe a um, parallel stroke over here to get the bottom. Another parallel stroke here and another one here. And then we have it covered. Look at that, and then you can do a little bit of um, touch up over here on the line if you want. And that's about it. I wouldn't want to go in and touch any more of these swatches once you get them painted in there. Let them dry. Don't don't go back in and try touching them up. That wouldn't be a great thing. Always remember with watercolor, it dries fast, so you want to get your wash down and then touch up quickly whatever you have to touch up, and then you have to just let, let it be until it dries 100%. And then you can go in and do another touch up if you have to, or work another section. But always remember your really your key idea with watercolor painting and doing um, passages in your painting, or if you're doing these exercises, is get your main shape, whether it's your H, your S, or if you're doing your vertical upstrokes, try to do them, you know, at a good pace. Don't, don't um, wait too long in between each of your brush strokes and try to tidy up all the spots that you have left open quickly so that you can have everything done relatively quickly and then it'll look even. Do you see how these look pretty even here with the colors? So these all look pretty even. This one's a little bit, uh, and this one here is still drying, but you will see a little bit of variation here and there once in a while. But that's as, you know, this to me is like a good exercise in the fact that not only not only are you using like good, you're, you're getting the practice in with your brush strokes and using your brush, the feel of your brush, the feel of the paints, but you're also learning about the drying times of your watercolor. You'll see how quick it dries how quick you have to get in there and, t and finish your, your, your color swatch um, so that you don't get unpleasant looking marks. If you can get in there and do it all quick at one time, within a minute or two, you're much better off. Whereas if you take 10 minutes to do one square, 
at a time, it might be a little bit unpleasant looking because you're going to see little blotches and spots of paint. So I hope this is a great, uh, fun exercise you'll do. I hope you'll practice this a lot. And again, I guarantee it's going to make your painting a lot more fun, a lot more easy. You won't stress nearly as much once you're practicing these and getting these committed to memory. And you'll have, like I said, it'll, it'll help your watercolor painting tremendously. So thank you so much for coming by. And um, again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. The button is right down there on the right hand side. You click subscribe and this way you're getting our videos. And not only are we doing these videos, we're also doing our normal videos every week, which are just normal, you know, um, paintings of any type of subject matter you can imagine. Flowers, seascapes, landscapes, lighthouses, flowers. We're doing um, figure painting. We do uh, landscape painting, cityscapes. We do every type of watercolor paintings imaginable right here on this channel. And we're also, again, working with uh, Extreme Beginners series now. So we're going to be doing these videos and also incorporating in uh, paintings as well with this uh, technique using these paints and the brushes that we have here that you've been seeing here. They're beginner's brushes. You don't need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on art supplies. You can start out with your simple sets of paints, brushes, uh, you know, fairly um, inexpensive paper, and we're going to do paintings again. We're going to continue to do paintings in the Extreme Beginner series. We'll do flowers, we'll do buildings, seascapes, lighthouses, you name it. We're going to do it all here. So um, stay tuned. Lots more fun and uh, happy painting to everyone. We'll see you soon.